Hello guys, today we're going to be looking at the WCH eLink uh, or Link E debugger and we're going to be looking at how to configure this debugger and how to work with it in case it stops responding, what are some of the most common errors about this debugger and how to fix them and how to resolve them. So the one we're going to be using for this uh, series of tutorials, it's this one here. So this is the Link E. So this is the this is the link e this one. Uh, we're going to be using the link e version of of uh, the WCH link, and I'm going to be showing you how you can use that to debug your programs and work with it. The first thing we're going to be doing is uh, when we open. So the first thing that we're going to be doing is to on connecting our e link. Uh, we need to determine the ports. So uh, the first one is the UART port. So in order to check the UART port, uh, you can just look into the USART print function and uh, in the pre preprocessor if statement, this one, you can see that it's GPIOA pin 9. So it differs per development board, but if you want to see which pin is being used, uh, you can just look for the header of the you can just look for the function definition for this uart printf init and you can see the pin so and you can change it as well so in this case you can use pin 2 or pin 10 and uh, depending on which one you want you will be able to switch so if you're using so if, you're, if your project uses uh, pa9 then you can switch to other gpio pins as well <coughs> Okay, so okay, so for this example, we're going to be using the CH32V203. Uh, so this is the QFN package. And I'm going to be showing you how to work with the e-link and how to connect it. So firstly, uh, two cables will be used for uh, the SDWIO and the clock interface. And then the other two, they're just ground in VCC. So uh, I'm going to show you how you, uh, so you can look this information through the WCH user link manual to find the corresponding pins. And then also lastly, uh, one pin, this one, one pin will be dedicated as the transmitter for a UART. Now, if we go over to our link, uh, and we can see the connections from it. So as you can see, uh, two pins go to for clock and input output and then ground and uh, VCC. And then if we flip our link, we can see that uh, one input, we can see that one input, uh, this one, Will be used as a receiver for our UART so that way we can do debugging uh, via the, our UART printf function so that's all uh, for this and then i'll show you how to troubleshoot some of the most basic issues when using the wch link now when you're working with the WCH link, the first thing you want to do is if you want to get more information about the link, you need to get the user manual. And you can find this by typing uh, the link search in WCH and you'll find the user manual here. So this is the, you can download the user manual, the English version of the user manual here. And if you want a short description, you can find it here. So this is the WCH link. So now I'm going to open the WCH user manual and <clears throat> and we're going to start off with the basics. Now there are four types of links. Uh, we have the link, the first version, the link E, uh, the DAP link and link W. Now the most common of these is uh, WCH link E. It's the most common version. It's the one which I'm using in this tutorial. So I'll be mainly focusing on that. Now, uh, first thing that you want to do is when you've connected your link to check if it is working, you need to look for it in uh, device manager and you'll find it under external interfaces and you should see a WCH link. 
So for example here, so for my device, I'll go to device manager. Now I have not yet put the link, but upon including the link, Now, uh, the moment that I've put the link, we should find it under this one, you see. So under this device uh, interfaces, we can see that the link has been connected. So that's the first part. So once you have connected the link, it should show this WCH link RV connection. And uh, depending on the MCU you are using, the link modes are different. So the link comes in two modes, uh, risk five and arm mode. And by default, it's in the risk five mode. And this is for WCH risk five MCU core chips that support single or dual line uh, debugging. Now, uh, now, how do you switch this mode? Uh, you can use Mount River Studio, but please take but please be aware that this is only available for WCH Link, WCH Link E, and uh, WCH Link W. So if I open my Mount River and I go to configuration, and you hit query to in order for you to fetch. Now you can see that the link that I'm using has two available options. So a link RV and a DAP link. Now I'm going to cancel this. So once you've chosen your mode uh, and the one you want, uh, you can find extra information about uh, using the link. So for example, the second thing we need to talk about is baud rate. Uh, now, the WCH link E, which I'm using, so E, DAP link, and link W, they support a baud rate of up to 92, 1, 600. So if you are using maybe data-intensive applications or you are dumping uh, a lot of data onto the console, then you can use a higher baud rate. Now, uh, Okay, so now uh, we're going to, now this uh, for, now the next part is we're going to be looking at some common chip connections. So if your link is not working, you can check the type of connection that you have. And uh, depending on the connection, you might have a dual link. So for example, all other MCUs except V003 and 641 have uh, dual connections, but with V003, it's one wire interface. And also, uh, you can use the WCH link for STM32F series MCUs uh, as a JTAG interface as well. And this shows you the pin connection. Okay, so that's it for setting up the link. So in this example, I am using the V203, or which is in this family, 20X. So my SDW DIO is PA13 and my clock is PA14. And then uh, if I open up Mount River, this is the sample EVT. You can see for my printf function that I will be printing to GPIO pin 9, uh, Pass A, so PA9 is where I'll be connecting my UART transmitter and receiver to. And in this case, we are just uh, receiving data from the MCU. So we only need one pin. And you can configure the UART connection as well. Uh, so you can change power rate, width, length, and stop bits, and so on, uh, so that they can all match. Uh, your connection dependencies. Now, uh, let's look at some common issues when debugging your WCH link. So the first one is that device uh, link is not found. 
So that's the first problem. Now, if that happens, uh, the first step is to open your device manager and to double check if it is showing here. So, for example, in this case, if I were to remove my link, you can see that it disappears. But if I were to plug it back in, it's showing. So this, there are two reasons why this happens. So if you look at the user manual, one of the main reasons, uh, it depends. So if you are using Windows 7, you need to make sure that the CDC driver is installed. Uh, and if you re-unplug the link, you need to make sure that you reopen the serial debugging assistant you are using. So uh, if your drivers are correct uh, and the device is showing in device manager like this one, but when you try to download, it's giving an error, then the next thing you need to do is to check your connections. Uh, as, the table, as the table above here shows, uh, as the table below here shows, these are the common connections. So check the type of MCU you have and the type of connections you are putting in. As a rule of thumb, if your connections are proper, the power light should, the power LED should be on on the MCU on or on the development board. So that's one good sign to see if your connections are proper. You can double check with the power. So if there is power, because one of the biggest complaints, uh, one of the biggest mistakes we've seen is people switching between VCC and GMT. So just make sure. Your board is on. Uh, it should light up one LED if power is connected correctly. And then for the clock, double check that your SDWIO and clock are the same, or in this case, if you only need one. And then lastly, once you've connected your link, uh, you can test the connection using WCH serial port debug tool. So in this case, uh, if if you have properly connected your device, it should appear automatically. So, for example, your COM4, COM port 4 WCH link serial. Now, upon connecting uh, and clearing, if you hit the reset button, it should start showing uh, the first output. So, in this case, the system clock and chip ID. And that's a uh, so that's pretty much how to handle the WCH link. Uh, I hope so. This should be like a rough guide. Start if you have any other problems, you can tell us and uh, I'll show you also how to resolve these issues. OK, so that's it for this video. Thank you very much. If you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below. Uh, and if you want to reach out to us, uh, you can contact us via Twitter. Uh, at Patrick Yang or you can email to him directly. We are more than happy to know if you have any questions and how we can help you solve and apply these issues. So that's it for me. That's it for today. Bye-bye.